And here we go again. It's Wednesday, June 22nd, one day into summer. <laughs> Yesterday was the official start of summer. And uh, what a spring, huh? How about Yellowstone? Can you believe that? You've been looking at that, watching that, keeping up with it? Matter of fact, uh, Yellowstone, I believe they are opening up. Uh, opening up as part of Yellowstone today, aren't they? Yellowstone National Park, yeah, it's partially reopening today. Visitors are going to be able to uh, access Old Faithful, West Thumb, and other areas, but some areas of the South Loop, such as Norris and Lewis Lake Campgrounds, going to be off limits. And I think they're doing an odd, even license plate. And I think it's starting with even today. And odd tomorrow, something like that. Anyway, Yellowstone is trying to reopen. Man, what a mess, though. What a mess. They're calling that the thousand-year flood. All right, we'll go with that. Hey, my name is Mike. I'm your host. Uh, this is the FBTV podcast. We do it every Wednesday and Saturday morning. Saturday morning's Q&A day. If you got any questions you'd like to have answered about transportation, freight brokering, whatever it may be, feel free to send your questions to me. You can do that by sending them to FBTV at FreightBrokerTV.com. You can use the forms on our website at FreightBrokerTV.com. You can also Skype those questions to us. Just open your Skype app, do a search for FBTV. Okay, Wednesday, June 22nd, today. You know, we do, we do these todays, you know, what is today? Because every day is something. Maybe not an official holiday, but somebody's got it registered somewhere to make it something. But anyway, today, June 22nd, Chocolate, Chocolate Eclair Day. It's also Onion Rings Day. And Stupid Guy Thing Day. Take your pick, ladies. <laughs> it's our day for stupid guy things. What would a stupid guy thing be, you reckon? I'm sure some of these ladies out there can figure something out pretty quick. Let us know. You keep it if you are... Uh, I was going to say you could drop it in the comments, but... Uh, only a portion of this video is going to make it to YouTube. I guess you could still do it there if you wanted to. Okay, fuel prices. Well, the EIA, Energy Information Administration, whatever they're called, they are doing something different now. You know, what's been fine for umpteen years, the way they've calculated the uh, average fuel price, isn't good enough now. They're, they're changing it around. And since it's a government entity, it wouldn't surprise me if they're changing it to make it not seem as bad. You, you know what I mean? Now, I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, since we couldn't get any fuel prices from the EIA, well, AAA, they are doing an, a daily average. And right now, it's uh, diesel's 581, gasoline 497. Nuts, man. Not even going to say anything about it. Because we're all feeling it. We all know what's going on. We understand what's going on. We understand why. And you just can't fix stupid. You know what I mean? It is what it is. <clears throat> okay, today's impossible question. Let's get right to that. 7% of Americans have recycled this. Now, I'm not talking about putting it in the recycle can and putting it out front. I'm talking about you've recycled it yourself. 7% of Americans have recycled this on your own. Think about it. One thing comes to mind is those uh, Cool Whip containers. How many of you all recycled those? That drives me nuts. <laughs> My wife has a habit of those containers, those uh, butter containers and Cool Whip and things of that nature. No, she won't throw them out. She'll save them. And to me, it's garbage. You know, throw it away. Throw it away. But to her, well, it is what it is. 
Yeah, now, granted, sometimes it's nice to have one of those when you actually need one, but uh, for the most part, I never need one. And if I do need something, we got Tupperware or something like that. Well, we don't have the Tupperware we used to, but uh, we still got a lot of containers. Okay, spot rates. Let's look at that for a moment. From last week, van is down 0.2%, flatbed up a half percentage point, refrigerated down 1.3%, spot rates uh, this month compared to last month. Van rates are down 2 cents, down to 269 per mile, flatbed up 2 cents uh, to 347 per mile, which is normal for this time of year. Refrigerated down 4 cents, down to 303 per mile. And all of that is about in line for what happens this time of year that's construction season and I'll tell you this if you're a broker if you're a freight broker you're trying to figure out what you can prospect roofing is uh, something I'd be seriously looking at right now we had a hail storm here a few months ago and I think every house in our neighborhood in a four or five six block area is getting a new roof put on. So I'm sure roofing is uh, moving. You may want to check that out. Okay, our topic today. Our topic today is going to be how to get trucks to move your loads. Basically, what I'm talking about specifically is, all right, you're a new broker. Maybe you're a broker agent. You've been making your sales calls. You've been acquiring customers. You have been obtaining loads, or your your customers have been making loads available to you on a daily basis, but you're not getting any trucks. You can't get trucks to haul your loads. So how do we do this? What do we do? Well, being a new broker, that's that's just going to be par for the course. That's the way it goes when you first start out. And a lot of that is simply because as a new broker, you have no credit rating. You have uh, no days to pay or anything like that. You, you know, you're, you're new. Generally, a trucking company is going to want you to be in business for at least a year before they think about using or, uh, you know, hauling any of your loads. If you've been in business for a year, that kind of tells the trucking company you're going to be around. You know, you're, you're stable. Now, these credit scores, days to pay, things of that nature, and factoring companies, that's, uh, you know, just something you're going to have to work your way through. There's no easy way to do that. But generally, after a few loads, you move a few loads, uh, trucking companies start reporting how you pay and things like that. Yeah. Now, I will tell you this. Factoring companies love brokers that factor <laughs> their invoices. And you know where we stand on factoring. Factoring is something we highly recommend you stay away from as a broker. It's, it's not good for a number of different reasons. But uh, one that comes to mind immediately is uh, you're going to use lose control of your account. All right. Because uh, once you factor an invoice through uh, from one of your customers through a factoring company, well, your customers are going to get a nice letter of assignment <clears throat> from that factoring company, basically telling that customer that uh, you have assigned their invoices to that factoring company, so therefore you've given up the right to direct bill that factoring company. Now, how do you get out of that? <laughs> Every factoring company is different. you got to read the fine print. Another thing that uh, we talk about when it comes to factoring companies is simply, uh, you know, if you're using a factoring company, well, if that customer is one day late paying their invoice, that factoring company, they're going to start dunning your customer. Your customer is going to start getting collection calls. How long will they put up with that? And, and the other thing about that is these people making the collection calls, they don't work for you. They work for the factoring company. Their concern is getting the money. It's not taking care of your customer. Although they'll tell you, we'll, we'll play nice, but 
when it comes right down to it, you have no control. They're not your people. So you got to pay attention to them. So how do you get trucks to move your loads? Well, there's a few things you can do. First thing is if a truck has committed to a load and then they back out, more times than not, it's because you're new. You're going to have to call that trucking company, call that dispatcher, and ask why. Why, why, are, you, why, why are you all not moving the load for me after you said you would? And they're going to say, well, uh, you were denied. We couldn't, we couldn't move it for you. You know, somebody said no. Ask to speak to that person that made that decision. Now, sometimes it might be the factoring company that told the trucking company, no, they're not going to approve you. So what you need to do is talk to somebody above the dispatcher, an accounts receivable or whatever. And even if, if it's somebody in accounts receivable that did not approve you or your credit, you still contact them direct. Ask to speak to that individual. When they get on the phone, ex, you know, explain, you know, plead your case, basically. Let them know, hey, we're new. We understand that trucking companies do not like working with new brokers because we're not proven. But if you give us a chance, load by load basis, what we will do is offer quick pay. Free, no fee, no fee quick pay. Matter of fact, if you're able to provide advances to a carrier, if you're in a position to be able to provide an advance, 40% uh, advance is good faith money. Offer the carrier a no fee advance or no fee quick pay. That way they don't have to use uh, go through a factoring company on your loads. They can, you know, uh, they're still getting the benefit like a factoring company. You're, they're still going to be paid quick. But you're putting that 40% get faith money up front. Then you're going to follow it by paying them quickly. And I do mean pay them quick. Don't make them wait. Don't make them wait 30 days. You get the money to them quick so you can prove yourself. That is going to do nothing but help you. That carrier will want to use you over and over again. You know, I was looking at a factoring company website here a while back. And that website was actually <laughs> talking about how bad it is for a broker to offer quick pay to a carrier or even an advance. The factoring company was against that. I wonder why. <laughs> you know, they were trying to come up with every every reason in the book they could think of why that would not be a good idea for a trucking company to use a, a broker that way. And the bottom line is they don't want you to do that. They don't want you to work with a broker that will give you, uh, provide uh, uh, advances or quick pay because it knocks them out of money. You know what I mean? They're not getting their 3 4 or 5%, whatever they may charge. Okay, so another thing you can do when you're looking to get more trucks or get trucks to work with you as a new broker, start contacting trucks in the afternoon. Introduce yourself. Call them. Introduce yourself to management at that trucking company. I'm not talking about a dispatcher. You can start there, but work your way up. You want to talk to somebody... Uh, above the dispatcher, actually. Start talking to them. Make contact. Plead your case again. You're a new brokerage. You'd like to get set up. You'd like, you know, with that carrier. You, you'll you'll uh, make concessions. Maybe for the first month or two, six months even, you'll provide them no fee advances, no fee quick pay. You see, what you're trying to do is develop that reputation. Now, if you don't want to, you know, Put that out on the line in the beginning, or maybe you're unable to, you know, offer that uh, quick pay in events scenario. You can still contact the carriers and try to get set up with them. If you can get set up with them and them with you, when it they, they open 
it up on their TMS, you're there. You're set up. There is no. Now you're new. We can't. We can't. We can't work with you because you're already in their TMS. You had talked to somebody. They said, "Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll set up with you." Blah blah blah. You know, you, you got to talk your way in. Now another way is, uh, and this is obvious. You know, I haven't. I'm, I'm saving the obvious for last. Obviously, <laughs> the load boards. You know, so many times I see brokers use load boards, uh, not to their advantage anyway. You know, if you get in there, you got to start thinking. When you're looking at the load board, trying to find a truck, you've got to think like a trucking company's thinking when it comes to a load. And you want to call the obvious first. You know, we go through this in training. In training, when we are talking about finding trucks we have a lot of different ways to find trucks different uh, methods to use because one you've got to have more than than one tool to help you find a truck because someday you're going to have loads you can make five six seven hundred seven hundred dollars on and if you don't have multiple tools to help you find a truck if you've ran out of trucks to call to try to sell your load to now you're on the bench you, you see what i mean you're on the bench you can you're 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 starting to see that that big old load net fly away. The thing is, somebody's going to move your load. There's a truck out there that will take that load. They will haul that load. The thing is, you've got to get to that truck before somebody else does. That's why you need all these different tools available to you. But in training, we go through that. If if you're thinking about becoming a freight broker, maybe you are a freight broker. You're having trouble finding trucks. Maybe. Uh, you know, you're you're wanting to work from home, and you've been thinking about working as a freight broker. I invite you to check out Taltoa, T A L T O A, dot com. We've been in business for over twenty years in transportation, pushing thirty, and we have consulted, trained, assisted thousands of individuals and companies with their broker operation. If you're thinking about starting your own brokerage, we always recommend start out as a broker agent. As a broker agent, you're going to be working under a licensed broker. So you're not going to have to go out here and get your own authority, bond, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be working under that broker's credentials. You're going to be an agent for that company. Now, as an agent, yeah, you're working at home. Well, that's where most freight broker agents set up shop is at home if you want to go out and get an office that's totally up to you but my recommendation to everyone is keep that overhead low until you start producing an income now how long does it take to produce an income everybody's different i've had clients that uh 30 days later they were getting a pretty good paycheck every week i know that because we were writing the paycheck I've had other clients, you know, three or four months later, they were still trying to move their first load. It all it all goes back to the individual, if you want to get right down to it. It's your business. As a broker agent, yes, it is your business. You work it like you want. If you get out there and you hustle, you do like you should be doing, you're paying attention to details, you, yeah, there's no reason why you can't have a successful broker operation but if you're just doing this a little bit here a little bit there heart's not really into it yeah it's going to take a lot longer to build up that business because what you want to do you want to get in there hustle up your customer base have a quantity of loads and from that quantity of loads you're going to start focusing or learning uh, from experience which loads are going to make you money that's going to allow you to focus on what makes you money. And, and I call that, you know, trying to get through that startup period, that startup period. Once you get on the other side of that startup period, that's when being a freight broker really gets fun. If you like to will and deal, that, that's when it's going to happen. But how to get trucks to move your loads? The load board. Like I said, look at the, uh, look at the loads. When you're using a load board, by default... Automatically, it's going to default the trucks that are available 
by age of posting. My recommendation is immediately, once you get the results, sort it by deadhead origin. That way you're having the trucks at the top are going to be the closest trucks to your load, the less deadhead, especially with fuel prices pushing $6 a gallon. Yeah, the less deadhead for a trucking company, the better. Then focus on your destination. Where does that truck want to go? Find the trucks that want to go to where your load's going. Start calling them first to work your way out. And I know a lot of brokers will set their, you know, their search criteria, you know, look no further than two hours, one hour, you know, for a truck. And I always recommend, you know, go as the day goes. You know, if it's noon, I may have my, you know, search six hours back for any trucks that match my search criteria that have posted within the past six hours. Now, a lot of brokers are going to say, no, no. You know, that's a waste of, you know, that that's a waste because more than likely uh, those dispatchers, yeah, they got a load for that truck. They just haven't taken it off the load board. True. But there are a lot of dispatchers out there that forget about their posting and they don't refresh it to make it look new. I can't tell you how many trucks I've found that have been posted for four or five hours because the dispatcher just simply didn't go back in and refresh. There are a ton of ways to start getting trucks to help you move your loads. You know, if you're, you know, we, we, we talked about uh, no fee advances, no fee quick pay. If you're wondering how to do that, if you got any type of a good relationship with your bank, go go talk to your bank. Get an open line of credit for X amount of money, whatever you know you can obtain. The idea is you're not using factoring company. You retain control of your own customer base. Factoring company's not involved at all. You're able to offer the uh, trucking company quick pay advances. And as soon as the customer pays you for that load, you can pay the bank back immediately. Keep that line of credit open. It's going to be a lot cheaper. Matter of fact, a lot of times, if you're able to pay the bank back within that 30-day period, 31 days, 30 within that month, no interest. So think about that. Again, if you'd like to learn more about Taltoa, check us out, taltoa.com, T-A-L-T-O-A.com. If you go to our website and you're looking over the different packages and you have questions, feel free to call me, 479-668-0838. All right, President Biden says decision on gas tax holiday. Gas tax holiday may come sometime this week. It may do it today. President Biden said uh, a couple of days ago that he will decide by the end of the week, whether he would support a federal gas tax holiday, possibly saving U.S. consumers as much as 18.4 cents a gallon. We talked about this the other day. This is just a Band-Aid. That's all it is, is a Band-Aid. It means nothing. 18 cents a gallon. Yes, I'm considering it, Biden told reporters after taking a walk along the beach near his vacation home in Delaware. Matter of fact, this... I think this same time he jumped all over a re reporter asking about a recession. But he said, I hope to have a decision based on the data. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, looking, I, I'm looking for it by the end of the week. Yeah, we'll see. He went on to say, you know, it, you know we go back to what we, we've been talking. Oh, it's just going to be repeat every, every, every time we talk about this or bring it up. And it's just aggravating as all get out. Him blaming the oil companies. Well, he said, you know, I looked for the clips before I couldn't find it. We were going to play them. But uh, during his campaign, he, he said he was going to, to uh, make it hard on the oil and gas companies. And he did. And he did. And, and here we are. Yeah, I'm sure the uh, war in U Ukraine isn't helping matters, but there's no reason we should be like we are right now. This has to do a lot with Biden. I don't know if people get tired of hearing me say this. I, You know, I'm not Democrat, not Republican. I, I want somebody in there to do it right. You know, put the country first. But 
It is what it is. FMCSA currently conducting multi-state blitz along I-81 corridor. <clears throat> Tennessee, Virginia, Maryland, all up and down through there. According to the FMCSA, now through June 24th, going to be extra enforcement on I-81. FMCSA is conducting a high visibility traffic enforcement campaign taking place in multiple states this week. During the traffic enforcement effort, state and local law enforcement will patrol the I-81 corridor, New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, looking for unsafe driving behaviors like speeding, following too closely, distracted driving, pretty much what they do every day, just more of it now. So if you're on 81 now through June 24th, be, be aware. You've been, you've been warned. <laughs> okay. Another recall, Mack, truck, uh, Mack Trucks recalls thousands of vehicles with R.H. Shepard steering gears. You know, every time we get together, we have to talk about somebody recall. But anyway, Mack Trucks is the latest truck manufacturer to issue a recall stemming from a larger recall issued by Bendix subsidiary involving steering components. Specifically, Mack Trucks is recalling more than 6,000 Anthem, Granite, LR, Pinnacle, and TerraPro trucks with R.H. Shepard steering gears. All potentially effective vehicles are model year 21 and 22. R.H. Shepard anticipates only 1% of the more than 6,000 trucks have the defect. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the steering gears may have been assembled incorrectly which can cause the gear to fracture. A fractured steering gear can cause a loss of steering control. We talked about this the other day. It's just now it's made it to Mac, increasing the risk of a crash. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> if, if the uh, steering gear fractures, yeah, that, I can see how that could cause a crash or increase the risk. <laughs> There is no remedy for this uh, problem affecting Mack trucks. Owners of affected vehicles should receive notification next month. In the meantime, uh, you can direct tra uh, questions to Mack Trucks Customer Service, 800-866-1177, 800-866-1177. Recall number SC0437 in HTSA's number 22V-40. One. Goodness. Hey, is it your birthday today? You're in pretty good company. Dr. Scholl. Yep, that guy. Foot guy. Foot products. They, 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 Dr. William Scholl, born in the state back in 1882. Ralph Waite, remember him? He was in Cool Hand Luke. He was Papa Walton, Daddy Walton. He was uh, Gibbs' dad on NCIS. He was born on the state back in 1929. Ed Bradley. Remember him from uh, 60 Minutes, born on the state back in 1941. Britt Hume, ABC, Fox News, uh, born on the state back in 1943. Merle Streep, born on the state back in 1949. Lindsay Wagner, the bionic woman, born on the state back in 1949. Tracy Pollen, Pollen, is that her name? Pollen. She's born on the state back in 1960. Yeah, she was, uh, If you're, you, that name sounds familiar, but you can't place her. Yeah, she, uh, Michael J. Fox's wife. Matter of fact, they met on Family Ties. Didn't she play his TV girlfriend? And that's how they met. Been together a long time. On this date, back in 1847, the donut was invented. And on this date, 100 years after the donut was invented, 1947, the heaviest rain recorded in history falls on Holt, Missouri, 12 inches in 47 minutes. That, that would have been a sight to see. And on this date, back in 1994, the Houston Rockets defeat the New York Knicks, 90-84, to win the NBA championship. Let's see here. Oh, hey, got to remind you, the uh, FBTV podcast mug is available. Matter of fact, I got one right here, right here, just like just like you see on just like you see at the bottom of the page there or the screen. There we go. We're getting, anyway, if you want to order one, check it out. You can help the uh, help us out here, keep these podcasts going, and uh, have a collectible. They're they're pretty inexpensive, really. 
good quality, inexpensive. But uh, you'll find them on our website, FreightBrokerTV.com. Uh, you can order one right there. All right, very good. Okay, anything else going on? Uh, oh, did you hear about this up in Illinois? <laughs> truck, truck towing 44,000 pounds of peanut butter caught fire in Illinois. What a mess. Says uh, charred peanut butter was uh, seen scattered across the uh, side of the road. Peanut butter mess plus the heat has led to a lengthy, lengthy <laughs> cleanup, I imagine. Average American family sends each other 10,000 texts per year. Number one topic, what's for dinner? 15% of business workers have business cards. You know, that's something I, when I'm dealing with my clients, working with my clients, they, they the first thing they want to do, it seems like, is get a business card. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to order some business cards. Well, you don't need them. You really don't. If you want to order them, that's, you're, that's fine. They're pretty inexpensive, you know. I, but, but everything you do as a freight broker, it's over the telephone for the most part. You know, if you want to uh, send a business card out, that's, that's totally up to you. But, uh, yeah, you know, you can save that money. Uh, you know, years ago, probably 10, 15, 12, before the Internet anyway, I remember, you know, if you start a new job, you, you, you sat there and waited three, four, five days waiting for your business card. Until you got your business card, you were nobody. But after you got the business card, just like Steve Martin talked about in The Jerk, he was somebody now. I'm somebody now. Remember the telephone book? <laughs> All right. Uh, before we get out of here, today's impossible question. 7% of Americans have recycled this. What is it? Aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Anyway, that's that. All right, we'll be back Saturday morning. Remember, Saturday's Q&A day. It will be pre-recorded, but you'll have access to the uh, entire video podcast on YouTube starting at 9 a.m. And then after Saturday, you'll be able to find it on our Freight Broker TV website. Just go to uh, live stream. Okay, we're, it's summertime. Things are hopping. We're not in the studio on Saturdays. Too much, too much to do. Boats, camping, fishing. <laughs> Going to start doing videos from the boat, though. Uh, we're working on that anyway, but i uh, be looking forward to that. But if you got any questions for Q&A Day, email them to me, fbtv at freightbrokertv.com. Plenty of forms on the website. You can submit them. Matter of fact, if you're watching our YouTube videos, any question pops into your mind, yeah, leave a comment on the uh, video. We'll answer it. And uh, if you'd like to send it to us via Skype, you can do that as well. Just uh, Skype it to us at FBTV. Just do a search on your Skype app for FBTV. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this Wednesday edition of the Freight Broker TV podcast. We will be back Saturday. We'll talk soon. Have a good day, unless you've made other plans. We'll see you.